Hi, Jinx. What's up, kitty cat? We're going on an adventure, Jinx. <laughs> oh, okay. And <laughs> that's my cat in the background. That's Jinx. <laughs> Um, anyway, we're out here having an adventure. Oh, here comes Orion. Okay, sorry guys, I got distracted. Anyway, in... Jinx, you're screwing up my shot here. <laughs> Do you guys look? Look, Juicy, where is she? There she is. Hi, Jinxy. Okay, anyway. Hello everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. My name is Eric, it's so great to see you. If you're new to the channel, welcome. It is very, very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up squad? So, for this week's collective message, I decided, or well, I was being um, inspired to do a pick a deck reading. And so that's what we have here. And because we are in February, this is the month of love, I decided might as well make them some love readings. So, please don't mind my cats playing in the background while I am trying to shoot. <laughs> They're literally chasing each other. Okay, anyway, so on your screen right now, you have an image of the three decks that I have used for this reading. And they are three different messages. So I, what I want you to do is take a, step, uh, a seat, uh, sit down for a moment, relax, take a deep breath, and connect with your intuition. And allow your intuition to uh, draw you to one of these three decks. Deck number one. Deck number two. And deck number three. Now. You can choose all three if you want. If you're feeling guided to watch all three, go right ahead. Uh, otherwise, just pick one, and then you can use the timestamp in the description box to go to that message. So I'm going to put the image back up on the screen, and I just want you to take a moment to listen to your intuition and figure out which deck is best for you. Hey there guys okay so if you have chosen deck one with this beautiful blue heart then this message is for you yes again general reading take what resonates but let's see what comes out here so we're gonna give this five shuffles starting with the love oracle deck to get your overall message so one two for deck one, what love messages do we have for those who have chosen deck one? This is three. This is four. For pile one. And this is five. All right, so connecting to the energies of this message so far. Oh, geez, this is five. Okay, um, I'm hearing heartbreaking realities okay let's see here what messages do we have for those who have chosen deck one okay that's enough for now all right what do we have here yeah okay for first card out you guys is separation sadness missing you thinking about you yearning unease of future um i'm sorry un Sure, I'm sorry, unsure of future. To be honest, that's what feels like is um, coming through the most right now. That one is standing out to me the most, unsure of the future. So there may be, you may be having a relationship with someone right now. This could be twin flame me just because of the separation phase. Okay, but I mean, it doesn't have to be, and you don't have to be on the twin flame journey to resonate with this necessarily, okay? But 
um, in this sense of separation or in this state of separation, it really feels like, first of all, it feels like the, the separation between you and your partner right now is really, really heartbreaking. But what's more heartbreaking, I want to say, is what has caused the separation to begin with. And I feel like there is a reality here of what's only making this worse for you is that with this being unsure of the future, it's like being unsure of your the future of your relationship, which is only adding. And that's what's making this separation so much more agonizing. I, 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 I may it, it feels like you guys may, may not even be in communication with each other. Like you may be physically separated, taking some time away from each other, but I feel like also either one or other or both of you are not communicating um, and it's breaking your heart. You also have that with the sword and the rose, clarity, truth, revelation, solidarity, force, honor, protection, and power. So another part, so okay, so Ooh, wow. Um, another part of this heartbreaking reality, you guys, could really be the fact of the truth and the clarity that you are gaining here. I feel like somebody is seeing someone's true colors for the first time, and it's, it's in some ways, it's causing a massive upheaval. And this might be a situation in which everyone else around you saw it, but you didn't. And somehow I feel like the separation, the separation between the two of you is only making this worse, but it's also shedding light on the situation, allowing you to gain more clarity in the situation. And it could just be uh, a simple matter of it's the fact that, you know, you have time and space away from this person or away from your partner to think clearly because you don't have them within your space or in your vicinity to help influence the way you're processing the situation. Um, for some of you though, I'm feeling very specifically that the way they are acting in this separation, i.e. the way they are not communicating or maybe just not communicating effectively, either is or has been a huge, huge revelation for you. Let's get a little bit more on this. That's enough. All right. Oh, yep. Yeah. All right. Well, well, shit. Well, shit. There it is. Twin flames. Yikes! All right, that's fine. But check it out. Before I go any further, let me just say that, to be quite honest, y'all, this is exactly why, or this is exactly what the twin flame situation is for. Clearing up the toxic energies. Okay? So if this person is your twin flame, then that could very well be why you saw it, or I'm sorry, everyone else saw it, but you didn't. Because you may have been caught up in the bliss, in that, in that initial moment where, you know, you kick it off and everything seems great at first, and then all of a sudden the toxic elements come up and you just don't want to believe it, this, that, and the third, but now you can't. You can't unsee this, Okay. You can't not believe it anymore. I feel like at this point it is staring you in the face, unfortunately. But it's for a reason. And also keep in mind that the twin flame journey really is not about another person external to you. It is very much a personal situation. And I know it involves another person, but it's, it's the mirroring aspect that's really important here. Because your twin flame, or at least the twin flame journey, will help you see or at least start to see some of the real toxic places and things within your life that needs to be healed. Toxic elements within you that need to be healed. It's really all about you. It is not about the other person. Okay? So keep that in mind. But that also might be something that's another part of this really ridiculously heartbreaking reality. All right. You have three more cards here. You have seduction. Attraction, flirting, dating, hooking up, temptation, third party interference. Now, hold on, wait, let me say, this doesn't necessarily have to be a twin flame situation for you, for you to resonate with this. I said that already, I want to say it again. Um, for some of you, it is, okay? 
But now I am definitely feeling like either there was a third party element to this, like somebody was running around cheating or just being unfaithful, or part of now this revelation that you're getting during separation is this person could be out there instead of working on, you know, keeping to the agreement, I want to say, and working on themselves in terms for the sake of, sure, themselves, but also for the sake of the relationship. Instead, they're out there running amok, doing whatever it is they want to do. Flirting, dating, seeing other people. While they may have told you, okay, well, I'm going to go do my thing and I'm going to be with myself and work on my healing, if they even said that at all. But I kind of feel like that was the impression you were left with, at least. But I'm also feeling for some of you that this separation has to do with the fact that somebody was not being faithful. And that doesn't, and not being faithful doesn't necessarily mean that they're out there having sexual relations with other people or being, um, uh, uh, being emotionally open or intimate with other people other than you, their partner. Uh, not being faithful, is, it's, just, it's a pretty general statement, not being faithful to the relationship. And a third party interference doesn't necessarily mean that this is another romantic or sexual partner. This could just mean friends or family or just other people allowed to get into the situation and stick their hands where it doesn't belong and f screw shit up, right? I feel like this other person that you're gaining some sort of clarity in terms of who they really are now that you're in this separation allowed that to happen. And it seems like it feels like they were more loyal to their friends, their family members, their teammates. I just heard that's pretty specific. Whether that be their crew or whether they're in some, they're, they, they play some sort of sport or something like that. They were allowing other people to make judgment calls on term, in terms of your relationship and were uh, maybe even talking bad about you and spinning the story to make it seem like you were in the wrong when actually it was them. And they don't want to take responsibility for that. And that is, a, that is even more evident in the fact that now, while you guys are supposed to be in this separation to heal, they're still not taking responsibility and they're still off running amok being a fool. Now, you've, finally, you have cassette, outdated thinking, conditioning, replaying events over in your head. Okay. But then you also have abundance. And to me, this is speaking to an abundance says, keep a positive mindset, manifest exactly what it is that you want, gratitude and bliss. Okay. So to me, what's happening for you in this situation right now in terms of the separation? Now, keep in mind, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, tangent, but keep in mind, you know, we could be, this could, uh, the roles could be reversed here. I just feel like if you're the one watching this reading, then you're the one that's needing the clarity and is trying to do what's right in the relationship. I don't feel like this other person that's running amok being a fool would even have the the, the self-awareness to, to sit down and watch something like this, okay? But still, the roles could be reversed. It's a general, re general reading, so take it as it resonates, right? But here and now, the situation is, the, 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 well, the point is that you need to recognize that there is a sense of outdated thinking, okay, that is keeping you in this situation. And if this is a twin flame situation for you, I feel like the outdated thinking here is you trying to validate the, the, the fact that you're meant to or supposed to be with this person even though they're acting in toxic ways because of the dogma that goes on with the twin flame journey oh this is my this is my everlasting person this is my one and only this that and the third nah honey come on come on the universe is way too abundant and infinite for that and quite frankly if somebody wants to run around acting a fool being toxic you don't deserve that and that's part of what this journey really is about, too. Learning to step up and stand up for yourself and know your worth and honor that, right? Okay. Now, at the bottom of the deck, you do have sunglasses. And I'm shuffling up the tarot here because I want to I wanna dive deeper into this for you. But at the bottom of the deck, you do have sunglasses. So you, which talks about watching, looking, stalking, gaslighting, perception, focusing out. And yeah, gaslighting. Oh, yeah. But stalking. I feel like you might be stalking. Which makes sense. You're trying to figure out what's going on. All right, that's fine. But honestly, I want to say don't, don't give this person the... 
What am I? What do I want to say here? Um, the dignity of your time and attention. Three more shuffles here. Two, one. Two. But now also, this person may be watching you. Three. Yikes. All right, let's go. Ooh. Let's go a little bit deeper here. We have something that popped out right away. That's enough. Okay. All right, at the bottom of the deck, there is you have the magician. So I really do feel like somebody is a manipulator. <laughs> okay. Um, start here. First pile that came out is the King of Cups and the Four of Swords. Uh, quite frankly, I feel like this is asking for you to be more emotionally mature. And it's actually asking you to do what's right for you. Do the right thing. And the right thing here would be to leave any sort of toxic elements behind. If somebody doesn't want to be emotionally mature enough to do what it is they need to do to heal and work on the relationship, then you don't have to stay there. But I feel like that's a struggle for you right now. Because you're still wrapped up in maybe the twin flame element. But if this is not a twin flame element for you, you're just wrapped up in the emotions, in what it used to be. what Maybe what you thought it was. What you were being sold. And you could be taking this King of Cups element, this emotional maturity and stability and saying, you know what, I'm going to stick this out. But I also feel like what the Four of Swords is asking you to do is really sit down and meditate, clear your mind and ask yourself, is this even worth sticking out? Because if not, it's more mature of you to say, you know what, I just need to leave this behind than it is to stay there out of some sort of codependency. And you may actually even be gaslit by this individual saying, well, you don't love me if you're just going to leave me like this. And quite frankly, it's like, but, you, you, but you've but you been disrespecting me this whole time. How long am I supposed to wait for you to get your act together? You have a decision to make. Two of wands. And right now, the, your, 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 your vision is being clouded because of your emotions. Five of cups. Okay. You've been working on this, working on this, working on this, but what has it really been giving you? Three of pentacles to the seven of pentacles. Now, three to the seven makes ten. And the ten of pentacles for me is a long-standing situation, sure. Something that you've been in, in it for the long haul, sure. But it also can represent a completion. And I feel like if you were to take the time and really sit down with yourself and think it over take stock of the harvest you have in front of you right now, you may realize that number one, this is a toxic relationship. Number two, this is not a team effort. And number three, you probably should let this go because I don't think you would want this growing in your garden much longer. Because I really, I kind of feel like if you were to really think about it and be honest with yourself and let's say, okay, let's play devil's advocate and see how long, and we'll just say we continue to do this. What damage would that do to you in the long run? You have, a ch you have a chance right now to circumvent any more damage. And I feel like you might need to take it. Yep. Hanged man to the six of swords. Okay. Change in perspective. In a difficult situation here, for sure. That is creating a sense of enlightenment for you or just a realization, a change in perspective, seeing something differently that allows you to move away from this. And if you can really do it, if you can like really get down dirty, do the work, you could be ending this type of cycle for yourself for the rest of your life. Or at least put yourself in a position to really start to end this type of thing. Because, I, because you know, even when, we're, even when we talk about ending cycles, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to show back up again. Often it will, but at that point, if you've done a sufficient amount of work, if you're really sticking to your guns here, you have the opportunity to say no. 
And that only helps to reinforce it to the universe saying, okay, so-and-so is really done with this then. They're really ready for something new. Hmm. Okay, at the bottom of the deck is the Magician. So yeah, we were talking about a, man a Manipulator here, but I feel like this could also be you. You have the opportunity to manifest something new. Magician to the Ace of Pentacles, a new physical reality for yourself. But I feel like a new reality for yourself is a reality that includes greater emotional boundaries. Queen of Cups. And then the Knight of Wands is here. And I feel like once you actually get to this place where you're like, no, I'm holding my boundaries... I feel like you're going to be able to really move forward confidently and ah, I just heard surprisingly virile. Oh, okay. But confident, excited, feeling good, feeling better about yourself. All right. I'm going to get one more pull here just to get a closing message for you. So closing message for pile or for deck one, please. Spirit closing message for deck one. I'm, I'm not taking any more. Uh, ooh, yes, honey. The fool. Underneath the deck, at the bottom of the deck, is justice. So, go ahead and take your leap of faith. Go ahead and start your new cycle. Go ahead and step out there and go in a different direction. Because that is what's bringing justice into your life. And you could be actually in a situation right now where either you're going back and forth within about it, or somebody else who, who this person, your person or whatnot, is gaslighting you, again, trying to tell you that, no, you can't leave, you shouldn't, don't do me like, you shouldn't leave me like this, you don't, like this, that, and the third, you're a ter per terrible person if you do this. But that doesn't change the truth. That doesn't make this unjust just because they or other people around them don't approve of the fact that you are taking control, taking your power back and moving on. Okay, and then if this is a sense of internal conflict, ultimately you have to understand what is best for you or what is most just for you. What will bring greater, greater justice into your life? Okay, I do feel like this is a struggle for somebody. This might be a marriage, not gonna lie, might be a marriage, but it's a general reading, so take it as it resonates, right? So your closing message here is to start a new cycle, take a leap of faith. And move on. Okay. There you have it. I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah. Take care. Mwah. Bye. <laughs> well, hey there. So if you have chosen deck number two with this beautiful silver heart, then this message is for you. Yup. Here we go. So we're going to start with the Love Oracle deck here. And let's just see. Five shuffles for deck number two. One. This is two. Love messages for deck number two. This is three. This is four. And this is five. All right. So what messages do we have for pile or deck number two? This is interesting. So um, already I want to say that if you've chosen deck number two, you might want to go back after we finish this one. You might want to go back and watch deck number one, or you may you might want to start with deck number one because you have we have two cards here already that have come out for that message. Okay. But you have the sword and the rose, clarity, truth, revelation, solidarity, force, honor, protection, and power. And you have healing heart, healing from heartbreak, freedom from toxic relationship or addiction. 
And then you have Seduction at the bottom of the deck. Now, Sword in the Rose and Seduction are the two cards that came out for the other pile. Or for the other deck. Okay? And Seduction says Attraction, Flirting, Dating, Hooking Up, Temptation, Third Party Interference. Now, for some of you, for somebody here, this actually does have to do with addiction. And uh, whether this be addiction to um, substances... Uh, or maybe just addic an addiction to a certain type of toxic relationship or something like that, I kind of feel like the message here for you guys is that you are actually in the process of healing your heart from some sort of addiction, whether that be substances or a relationship. And I feel like something is trying to seduce you back in, trying to get you to slip up or trying to get you to go back to your old ways. All right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You are definitely transforming here. Either you or someone else is transforming here. We have the Phoenix. New phase. Rekindle. Renew. Transformation. Growth. And a changed mind. And if you really are working on healing from toxicity, whether that be relationships or substances, please keep going because you are on the right path. Okay, you're going to get there. You're going to make it there. Do not let the seduction of whatever it is trying to rope you back in to snag you. And if you slip, don't feel bad. Okay, healing is a process. All right. I don't want you. I don't want this to, to sound like, you know, if you slip or something that now like you're the, the worst person in the world or some shit like that. No, you're a human being, honey. Okay. Um, you have here the chaser. Chaser in a codependent relationship, fear of an abandonment issue. You have love call. Someone expresses love, a message of love, thinking of you and letting you know. And then you also have hand of cards. Take a chance, risk being strategic, options, not showing your hand, and gambling. But to be quite honest, we could be talking about a, the twin flame dynamic because we do have the chaser here. And, you know, you know that's ripe with runner chaser energy. Um... But I feel like this is what you are coming out of. This is what you are transforming out of. And I feel like the, the, the seduction here might be the pull or the call to send some sort of message to somebody. I feel like you are Phoenix, uh, uh, Phoenix from the ra ashes risen in terms of the chaser dynamic. Okay. Um... And I, and I really kind of want to say the best thing for you to do right now is to, in, in being strategic, is to be strategic, but in being strategic, to not show your hand. At this point, if you really are the chaser in this situation, or you have been the chaser in the past, um, I think it's best for you not to show your hand this time. To not put all of all of yourself out there or to not put to not really allow your heart to be on your sleeve. I, I, and I don't mean this in a in a secretive way. I mean this in a way that I feel like you're in this state right now where you're you're learning to not be so open with people that don't respond or don't are not receptive to your advances or to your offer to not chase. I feel like what's best for you to do right now is to keep your hand, your cards to yourself, you know, not let everybody in on it. And quite frankly, that may make this person that you're, ooh, okay, maybe you're trying to seduce someone. And by you not showing all your cards, it may make them more interested and may make them respond. But I wouldn't, I, see, that, I really kind of almost wish I didn't say that because, because I'm not... Because ultimately, the chaser dynamic is the problem here. And you need to just allow yourself to let go of it. And if it doesn't come back to you, then it, then it wasn't for you. You know what I mean? Don't feel bad about that. Let's get your tarot here. Let's see. Okay, so far we have the Seven of Wands at the bottom of the deck. 
And then with that, we have a number of cards here that have come out, but the first card that came out is the Emperor. Now, okay, some of you may be thinking if you're dealing with a Twin Flame situation, this could be the Divine Masculine. And sure, you would be right. But quite frankly, I think this is the Divine Masculine within you. And the Divine Masculine, or at least the Emperor, or masculine energies in relation to like the feminine, the masculine creates structure, which also creates boundaries. And I feel like there is, especially here, you have the, the Nine of Wands with that. And I feel like this is your internal masculine energy coming through and guiding you or instructing you to put up some boundaries. But then also this Nine of Wands energy is, is saying persevere, keep going, don't give up. Because if you're dealing with getting over some sort of um, toxicity, right? Uh, an addiction of some sort. Oh wait, did I read seduction wrong? Seduction is attraction, not addiction. Anyway, I was picking up on addiction, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go with it. Um, this energy here is kind of speaking to encouraging you to continue moving on with your initial inspiration. But I feel like that initial inspiration is healing this chaser dynamic, rising out of that, the phoenix. We have one more card that's fallen face down, but then, ooh, it's the Two of Swords. There's an element of denial here. I feel like you may be going back and forth inside yourself saying, but but this is my twin flame, isn't it? If that, if this is a twin flame situation for you, but this is my twin flame and like, I, 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 but then see, but then the response to that is, it shouldn't be like this. And if this is a twin flame situation for you, then this is the part where you're learning to heal and accept yourself, I just heard, and allow your inner masculine to shine through, which is protective, defensive, sets boundaries, sets structure, okay? You've got, you, you really have to keep your guard up here, seven of wands. You have to maintain this momentum, this effort in order to continue healing your heart. I want to know more about this Two of Swords here. What's this Two of Swords, please? It's the Empress in reverse. And it fell right out on the Emperor. So unfortunately, what we're talking about here, this is a toxic feminine element. And that is enabling and lack of boundaries. Maybe over-emotional, but in the sense of over-emotion, it's like not dealing with your emotions, not handling the situation for yourself. Being too open, being too loving, being too giving. That's why there's denial here. You're sprung. You've been activated. We totally could be talking about the Twin Flame situation. You've been activated. You've been sprung. The Knight of Wands. Oh my god. The Knight of Wands to the Nine of Swords to the Lovers. But then to the Ace of Cups. And the Eight of Swords. Wow. So, okay, yeah, you've been activated on this. But... There's fear here, self-fulfilling prophecies here, to the lovers, which is that twin flame element, but what's keeping you away from this, from realize, realizing this relationship, having this relationship manifest in your life, is the blockage of self-love. Ultimately, the best decision for you right now, the lovers, is to love yourself. That's going to break you free from this Eight of Swords energy, this mental prison, this attachment, this need or, or, or this feeling of needing to chase. You don't have to chase anything. You can align and let it come to you. And that's kind of what Hand of Cards is saying here. Instead of showing your cards so much or instead of chasing after something or someone, align with it. Get into that vibration of it and allow it to come to you. That's the other aspect of the feminine or the, uh, the divine feminine or the empress. Receptivity.
Let's get a closing message here for you. I love that. Okay. Ooh. Honey. Queen of Swords. Straight facts. No truth. Uh, all truth. And we are not going to argue about this. Don't you dare. Don't you dare even twist your mind to think you're going to waste my time and argue with me about this. It is what it is, says the Queen of Swords. So the closing message here for you. Four of Swords. Strength. The Ten of Swords. And the Page of Swords. Four of Swords and the Page of Swords is asking you to sit down and meditate, clear your mind, and get to the bottom of this. Seek the truth here. Okay? And then have the strength to let it close out, to end this cycle. So if you're already doing this, congratulations and please continue. But if you have chosen this, this, this deck and this is resonating with you, then don't allow, and you haven't, and you haven't started closing out that cycle yet, don't allow the seduction uh, suck you back in. Okay? I'm going to leave it there. There you have it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you guys so much. And I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs> well, hello there. So, if you have chosen deck number three with this beautiful marble heart, then this message is for you. Yes? Excellent. Kicking it off with the Love Oracle deck. Let's get into this. Five shuffles and we'll see what message we have for deck three. One. I just heard this is a totally different vibe. Okay, so this may be something totally different from decks one and two. That's two. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's try that again. That's This is two. This is three. This is four. And this is five. Alrighty, kids, so what messages do we have for deck number three? Ooh. <laughs> okay. Alright. Um, shit, maybe this isn't a totally different vibe. I don't know. Okay. You have karmic relationship, fleeting triggers, I'm sorry, fleeting, triggers, turmoil, resentment, lessons, letting go, and loving you. You have heart with a key, welcoming love, meeting the one, open your heart, getting together and perfect. And you have mask, this is all just so far, you have mask, not showing true feelings, hide, personify, Pretend, delude, and gaslighting. Okay, so actually this may be a completely different vibe from the first two because I feel like what's happening here, what we're talking about for deck three is you overcoming. I feel like you're getting over the tomfoolery, the masks, the the and all that stuff of past previous relationships that were karmic that needed that were helping you learn about this stuff. And I feel like at this point, either you're getting there or you already are, um, you're ready to open your heart again. Okay? You have two more cards here. Oh, Lord in heaven. You know what is so funny about this, you guys? I did deck one. Okay, that's great. Then I did deck two. And I was like, you might want to watch deck one because a few of the same cards came out as deck one, right? And now we're doing deck three. And this is a completely different energy, and yet it's still connected to the other two. So 
shit. If you want to go ahead and watch all three, please, by all means, go watch all three. But now we have The Runner. And The Chaser came out in deck two. You have The Runner. Runner in a codependent relationship. Fear of int intimacy. Uh, listening to ego. But then you also have The Golden Mirror. And it came out in reverse. The Golden Mirror is self-absorbed, narcissist, one-sided relationship, love bombing. And I like to say with this, with this card here that the golden mirror, all that glitters is not gold. But you see, that came out in reverse. And I feel like this, and this is why I guess I heard that this is a completely different energy. Because this is the energy of somebody getting over this type of thing. Getting over these love bombers or these people that put up a certain look or, or sell you something and then you get into the situation with them and then they have no intentions, maybe never had any intentions of following through with what they sold you, like baiting and switching and all that. Somebody that's real cute and nice and, and loving and compassionate and open hearted in the beginning only to get you, only to get into the situation with you, only to get you like in their pocket and then they switch everything up on you. I think you're getting over that now. Or at least for this deck or this pile, this is who somebody's getting over this. At the bottom of the deck here, you have mirror. Mirroring each other, self-image, relationships reflect our wounds, introspection. And what's helping you get over this type of relationship here is the fact that you are starting to realize how this reflects parts of yourself that need to be healed. So either that happened and you've healed, and you're get, you've gotten over it, and now you're ready to open your heart up again to something that's really, truly loving and compassionate, like a really good situation, or this is where you're heading. Okay? I swear, y'all, you cannot make this shit up. Let's get into the tarot and see uh, what we have for you. Five shuffles, that's one. This is two. This is three. This is four. My neighbors are doing some yard work across the way and I have my door open, so don't mind the, the background noise. And this is five. Whoop, let's try that again. This is five. Four, deck number three. Messages for deck number three. Let's get a little deeper into this here for you. Yup, 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 yup. This is, in fact, 100% the healing phase. So this, this pick a deck session has been a progression. So even if you picked deck three and, and you didn't pick either, either of the other two and this is resonating with you, you might want to go back and watch the other two because that can help you put more of the pieces together because it literally has been a progression of, you could say, before, during, and after. And it looks like before, during, and after the breakup. At the bottom of the deck, you have the page of coins. A new reality, a new reality, excuse me, a new, uh, a, a new level. Creating something new for yourself. Why are you creating something new for yourself? Because you have finally gained the change in perspective that you needed to see this karmic or toxic relationship behind, see this karmic or toxic relationship for what it is, and finally put down the burdens. The Hanged Man, the Six of Cups, and the Ten of Wands. Now. Good God. Okay, this is better than I thought. Because the next three cards that we have here that came out is the Page of Swords. This was the only card that was up right here. And at first I was like, oh shit, somebody could be watching you. But you know what? I mean, they could be. Especially if you're like really moving on and they're fairly narcissistic. They could probably be watching you being like, why the hell is they, what, how they, what are they doing? Why are they doing that? And then, and then, and then, trying to like stalk you or, or keep up on your social media or some shit. But you know what? And that and that is entirely possible. That very well could be the case, but we don't give a flying fuck here. Why? Because you, with this page of swords, which is seeking, trying to understand, this is uh, Gemini energy. So this is like learning, and Gemini is very, very much about learning and communication, and very uh, like science and 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 educate and all that kind of stuff. 
you have gained the inspiration, the knowledge that you needed in terms of this situation here. Seven of Pentacles and the Sun. The Seven of Pentacles representing your process of trying to understand, getting to the bottom of this, finding the root of the plant that has grown in your garden, that is destroying everything else around it, and finally being able to rip it up and plant something new. This is the clarity, Ace of Swords, I'm sorry, the, the Sun with the Seven of Pentacles. This is the clarity on the cycle that has just been going and going and going, repeating and repeating and repeating, being in a situation where you're doing the same things over and over and over again, but expecting it to turn out differently. Nope. Nope. No, you've learned. You've learned Page of Swords, Seven of Pentacles, the Sun. Now, I'm not going to say that this was easy. Even though the sun is here, the sun is the most op op optimistic card in the deck, right? No matter what else comes out in the reading, when the sun is there, it's going to be okay. It's actually much better than you think, maybe. I'm not going to say that you getting to this realization was easy. Because when the sun comes through and it illuminates something, when it represents an illumination for you, that can also mean that it's burning you. It may have burned you pretty hard. This situation, this toxic relationship or whatever may have burned you pretty hard. But quite frankly, that burn leads to the realization of something that needs to change. And then ultimately, and this is where the most the, the optimism of the, that of the sun comes in. Ultimately, that sets you up for something much better in your life moving forward. And once you heal from that burn, you're good. You know how to defend yourself from getting burned like that again. I want to get a little bit more here. What other messages do we have for pile or for deck three? What other messages do we have? Get. Do we have for deck three? And it's interesting. It's interesting because the page of swords is here. And I, I was saying you have the clarity and the wisdom, but, th but that didn't really resonate so much. The Page of Swords was more talking about you seeking it, okay? And I'm finding, I, I was feeling like you found that wisdom and that understanding, right? Well, that's been confirmed because now the Ace of Swords is here. The Ace of Swords to Temperance and the Knight of Cups. So again, I mean, I said it in the other two, and if all three resonates with you, then okay, then the, yeah, you're dealing with a twin flame situation. And you don't have to be, though. This does not have to be twin flamey, okay? I'm only mentioning it now because Temperance is here, and Temperance is a twin flame card. Or at least can be a representation of the twin flame situation. Because of the balancing of two opposing sides, or two op like polar opposites, technically, or maybe sometimes, but um, the balancing and the alchemization of that, of two different energies, okay? But here for you, Ace of Swords, Temperance, and the Knight of Cups, you have the wisdom, the understanding, and the knowledge that you need that has brought you a sense of internal balance and harmony, and now you can move forward with an open heart. And at the bottom of the deck here is the Fool to the Queen of Pentacles. Knowing your worth and showing up for it. That's what I just heard. But also the Fool is taking a leap of faith and moving in a different direction. Okay. I'm hearing going with the flow, doing what's best for you. I love this. This was a good way to end this session. So there you have it, guys. I'm going to leave it there. They, oh, actually, well, no, that was the closing message. Yeah, okay. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so much, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yeah? Take care. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>